Okay, so I haven't gotten any um, requests for homework problems, because so I am going to assume that we're all good there. I did two big things to talk to you about today, and then um, your quiz, of course, will be on Thursday, um, and it will cover everything that we've been over in Chapter 5. Um, make sure you go back and look at those integral rules and all of that um, as you prepare for that quiz. Again, as I mentioned in the announcement, I'll make a Google Meet. If I am not there, you'll log on to the Google Meet, and that's how you'll complete your quiz. I'll have a little something for you to do after the quiz, but essentially it's pretty much all we'll be doing in class is the quiz that day. So that is on Thursday, so make sure you are caught up on all your work. Make sure you um, have asked all the questions that you need to ask um, to prepare for that. All right, so I know you can't see my calculator here, but the first thing I want to talk to you about is... Um, Finding definite integrals on your calculator. So if you'll take out your calculator, um, I'm going to walk you through it really quickly. It's really easy. It's almost exactly like the derivative. Um, just one little extra step there. So let's just say, for instance, I take some definite integral. Um, let's just go from 0 to, I don't know, from 0 to 3. And let's just take a basic function x. Okay. If I wanted to find this using my calculator, and remember, if you move into the negatives on this, like below that x-axis, your calculator is going to account for that. So if you're talking about area, it's always positive. But if you're talking about the integral, it could be positive or negative, depending on if it's above or below that x-axis like we talked. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into y equals on your calculator and just put your function, whatever function it is that you're trying to find here. So in this case, of course, it's x. Now, once you have that in your um, your y equals, just like when we use the calculator to do the end deriv, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come out of the y equals and come back on the main screen of your calculator. And you're going to hit the button that says math. And normally, remember, we would go down to end deriv, but we're not going to do that this time. We're going to go to the one right below it. Um, and it should say um, function integer or some or integrate or something along those lines, but you should see something along this. It should be option number nine, and that's what you're going to choose. Okay. Now, when that comes up, just like the integer, if you've got this integer, you're going to have a parenthesis, and the first thing that goes here is your function. That is the function that you are trying to find the integral of originally. Okay. So, of course, this was our, we put it in Y1 because it makes it easier. And if you don't remember how to pull up Y1, if you go over to VARS, right beside the program button, then scroll to the right to Y VARS, that very first option is function. If you hit enter on that, and then choose, of course, Y1 for what you want. All right, so there's your function then you need to do it again with the variable with which you're doing this with respect to. So, of course, this is dx, so we're going to do it with respect to x. And then you want your lower bound and upper bound. Okay, so low bound, this is your a. So we're going from 0, and then this is your upper bound, which is your b, which is 3. Okay, and if you do this, let me just do it on mine quickly so we're together from 0 to 3. Now, remember, and we're, we'll do this algebraically to make sure we get the same thing, too. I get 4.5 here. Okay, so just to show you why this works or how this works, if my function is x, remember that is a line. Starts at 0, has a slope of 1, and I'm going up to 3. So 1, 2, 3. So I'd be at 3, 3. So there's my, there's my function, but I am going from 3, and I have this shape that is a right triangle. So if I wanted to find the area here, I would do 1 half the base, of course, 1, 2, 3. And the height is 3 as well. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. 3 times 3 is 9, and of course 9 over 2 gives me back the 4.5. So make sure you can put that in your calculator and you can use that to evaluate because that is going to greatly help you with what we are doing today, which is the average value of the function. Okay, 
if you need to pause that, rewind that, or anything, write those steps down or follow along, feel free. I'm going to go ahead with the average value here. This is a typical um, AP style multiple choice question where they'll ask you to find the average value of the function. I've seen it on um, some FRQs as well, so make sure you can do this average value. And so average value is a pretty easy um, concept. All we're going to do, if I've got this function, actually, we'll call it f of x, okay? And we need to make sure that f of x is continuous on some interval a, b. Okay. If that's true, then the average value f on a, b is 1 over b minus a. So it's just the reciprocal of the range here times the integral from a to b of f of x. And so notice here, my integral, right, I'm going to be using my calculator for a lot of these um, because we haven't really talked a whole lot about finding integrals. We've, we've done some of them, a lot of shapes where you can graph it into the shapes, and some of them will do that. Some of them will use our calculator, but we'll go through several of these examples um, to make sure you understand. So let's just go ahead and start. Um, Look at some of the problems you'll be doing tonight. Um, let's look at this little section 11 through 14. Let's do 11 together. Y equals X squared minus 1. And it asked us to find the average value of the function on the interval from 0 to the square root of 3. And we know that this function is continuous on that interval because it is a quadratic. And quadratics are always continuous, so we don't have to check continuity here. Um, what I do need to do, though, is go ahead and set up my average value here. And so I'm going to do 1 over, of course, the b minus a, so square root of 3 minus 0. Times the integral. I'm going to go from my low bound and upper bound, so from 0 to square root of 3, and I have x squared minus 1. Now the directions on this ask me to use the function on my calculator, so that is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I have 1 over the square root of 3, so again I'm going to plug in here um, my x squared minus 1. Put this in your calculator. So I'm going to put the x squared minus 1 and the y equals. And I'm going to go into my um, calculator here, the function integrate. And I am going to um, do from 0 to square root of 3. And if you do that, you should get 0. Okay? Which means the average value of this function on the interval from 0 to square root of 3 is 0. Now remember, I'm talking about average value of the function which is my y value. And keep that in mind because this question asks us to do something else with it. Now before I do what else, I want you to be able to do this by hand, especially on one like this. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about this in terms of antiderivatives, okay? So I want you to think about um, this in terms of this antiderivative. So can you think of, if f of x is x squared minus 1, can you think of an antiderivative that would work? Um, and I say can you think of one because there are multiple. Remember we have that constant, that nagging constant that hangs over. But I hope you recognize that a, um, an antiderivative of this might be 1 third x to the third minus x, right? Um, and all I did was I did that backwards um, power rule there to find the antiderivative. Of course, I would have a plus c, but since I'm talking about a definite integral, 
I don't really have to worry about the plus C right now. So to evaluate this, what I could do is antiderivative of square root of 3 minus antiderivative of 0. And let's just see what happens here. The antiderivative of the square root of 3 would be 1 third times the square root of 3 cubed minus the square root of 3. Remember, I'm not going to worry about that c right now because it's not going to matter with it being a definite integral. Now, the square root of 3 cubed, think about what that means. That's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Yes? So, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So, I have 3 times the square root of 3. So I've got 3, square root of 3, and then my denominator is still 3 here, minus the square root of 3. This cancels. I'm left with square root of 3 minus square root of 3, and square root of 3 minus square root of 3 is 0. Now let's do f of 0 a little bit easier. You may have looked at this and thought there's no way we're going to get 0, but we do. Um, f of 0 is 1 third 0 cubed minus 0, which is, of course, 0 minus 0, which is 0. And if I subtract those, I come back to the 0. So I do find that no matter which way I look at it, I am coming back to 0 there. But I do want you to be able, and I want you all to hear me well, I want you to be able to do this both ways. Make sure you can do this algebraically and with your calculator here as you go through this. Okay, average value. Um, now that's not all the question asked. The question also asked you to... Um, point in the interval does the function assume its average value? So <coughs> where is the average value of, which is the y, right? Where is it zero? So I go back up, what equation was it that I was talking about? Well, I was talking about x squared, y equals x squared minus 1. So my question is then, where does zero happen? Because it's going to happen somewhere, right? So if I set this equal to 0, I add 1 to both sides, I get x squared. Take the square root, of course, it's plus or minus 1. So this average value happens at plus or minus 1, but I do have to be careful because it asked me only in the interval from 0 to the square root of 3. So on that interval, from 0 to the square root of 3, f of x will equal 0 when x equals 1, right? So the, it reaches this average value when x is 1. I don't include that negative 1 because, of course, it's not in my restricted domain there. All right, let's do another and see what happens. Um, let's do one just a little bit harder. Let's look at... Look at 36, secant x, tangent x. And it said that was on the interval 0 to pi over 3. All right, so again, for the average value of the function, I am going to do 1 over b minus a. So I've got 1 over pi over 3 minus 0 times the integral from a to b, secant x tangent x dx. All right, so of course I can use my calculator here. Um, but what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to work this one by hand because I don't think that this was said. Nope, just find the average value, and this is a non-calculator. So um, we will proceed to do this without the calculator. All right. So the first thing I need is I need a good antiderivative of secant x tangent x. Um, and of course, if you know your trig functions, which I hope you do, you know that. Oh, excuse me. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x, so a good antiderivative here would be secant x. Um, so I'm going to do 1 over pi over 3 
times. I'm going to do secant x, and I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 3. And of course, up here at the front, instead of pi over 3, this is going to be 3 over pi, since this one over that is the reciprocal. And I want to do the secant of pi over 3. So there's your unit circle minus the secant of 0. So just to talk you through how I would think about this if I couldn't remember the values on my unit circle, I always think about that very first quadrant there. Pi over 3 is up here at the top. All right, pi over 6 is down here. Nope. Sorry. Okay, no, I'm right. I'm right, I'm right. It's pi over 3. Up here we go, 6, 4, 3. Sorry. So the coordinates here of this point, 1 half square root of 3 over 2, and we know that the square root of 3 over 2 is bigger than 1 half, so if you're wondering which one goes where, look at do you go across further or do you go up higher, and of course because this is closer to my y-axis, I'm going up further, so that's my bigger number. All right, so secant is 1 over cosine, or the reciprocal of cosine, right? So cosine is my x, so I'm looking at this value. So the reciprocal of that is 2, so I have 3 over pi times 2 minus, and then what's the secant of 0? Well, at 0, my cosine here is, of course, 1, 0. It doesn't matter about the reciprocal there. So I have 2 minus 1, which is 3 over pi times 1, which is just 1. So that's the average value. Um, it does not ask me where that occurs, I don't think. Nope, it just says to use antiderivatives to compute that, which I have done, so there we go. And again, if you use your calculator, it should come up with the same thing, but it's going to be a rounding error, uh, rounding issue. You won't get the exact same thing, but if I put secant x, which I have to put it in as 1 over cosine x times tangent x, that's my y equals. Now I'm going to go into my integer, I'm going to pull up y1, um, my variable is x, and I'm going from 0 to, make sure you put that pi over 3 in parentheses, I get 1 for that, which is this part, and then of course I need to multiply it by the 3 over pi, so that should be good. All right, I hope that explains these. Um, you'll have some on here. Let me just talk you through a couple of these. 15 through um, 18 here, where it asks you to find the average value of the function on the interval without integrating by appealing to the geometry of the region. So, of course, I'm looking on here from negative 4 to 2. I'm finding the area of this triangle. Um, that's going to be the integral from negative 4 to 2, right, would be the area under that curve. And so it asked me to find the average value, so I'm going to do 1 over, subtract 2 minus negative 4 times whatever this area is. You really don't even need the equations there um, for those two. Um, for 17 and 18, you're going to take the graph, and what you know the graph looks like there, and um, find the area under them the exact same way. Um, and then we have done the 19 through... 30, so you should be good to go past this. Sure, I had given you all that, and I had. Um, so let's go tonight. We'll go 11 through 14 on page 305. And then actually 11 through 18. And then pick up with the ones you have to do by hand here. So 31 through 36. Okay. That should do that.